My name is Chris Irwin, and I'm CTO of Foresight IT Solutions. Today, I want to talk to you about a Teams application that we've created called Calendar Connect, uh, and just help you understand what Calendar Connect is and why we created it. Uh, Calendar Connect, as I mentioned, is a Teams application, and it was really designed to help eliminate some of the subpar collaboration experiences we kept running into with a bunch of our customers. You know, given these trying times, we've got so many people working from home now, uh, they were really forced into a work from home or school from home type of scenario that they weren't ready for. And so they've been trying to cobble together solutions. We've got a bunch of customers that are utilizing G Suite today. They're very happy with it. They don't have exchange mailboxes, but they want to leverage the power of Teams. And so that's really where Calendar Connect comes in. Calendar Connect gives you the ability to pull in all of your G Suite calendars into a, a nice, neat Teams application and also gives you the ability to generate online Teams meetings directly in the app and inject those back into your Google calendars. Um, so as we'll see in the demo here in a second, it's a very, very straightforward process, easy for customers to use, um, you know, whether those be students, frontline workers, et cetera works across verticals. It's not specific to any one vertical. As long as you're, uh, you've are you got the Teams APIs enabled in your tenant and you've got G Suite, very simple to set up and deploy across your environment. Um, so I want to show you real quick what the architecture looks like. Very basic concept. Um, very first thing that happens the first time a user signs in, we ping the uh, or we send a request to the Microsoft Graph API, and the user has to consent that our application has access to that data so it can read their calendar information. After that, we do the same thing for the G Suite API. After we've received valid um, consent for both services, then we go ahead and we pass that to the Calendar Connect web service. The Calendar Connect web service then goes out and pulls the calendaring information valid for that period, so it's only going to grab a small time window, um, from the G Suite APIs, and it's going to feed that back into the Teams calendar application to render for the end user. Very, very straightforward process. It's super lightweight, and uh, we've had a great and positive uh, feedback from customers that have used it. So give me one second here, and we're going to get the demo queued up, and we'll show you what it looks like. All right, guys. Now we're going to take a look at the Calendar Connect uh, administrative portal and then the application itself. Uh, so what we're looking at right here is the hub. This is the uh, centralized location where we manage all of our foresight enabled services. Uh, I've got Calendar Connect um, selected down here. And the first thing we're going to see are three separate options. Um, first, or add administrator. This is just where you would add additional administrators to the environment if you want to give someone else access to come in and download the application or make some customizations. Second would be customizing the application. You have the ability to go ahead and apply some branding. Uh, you can add your logo to it. You can change the nav bar color. You can set the background on the application. And then the final thing we do is download the application. Very, very simple. Uh, essentially what this does is download the, the application as an app manifest or zip file. Once you have that zip file, you can deploy it just like any other Teams application in your environment. You can push it out um, you know, to various groups of users. You can pin it to the sidebar, et cetera. So now let's take a look at what that, what that appears or how it appears in Teams. So as you can see, I pushed this out. I pinned it to the sidebar. So this is a Calendar Connect application. Um, we're going to go ahead and refresh this here. And what we're going to see is the sign-in experience. Um, very first time a user logs in, they're going to get prompted to delegate access. So I went ahead and since I knew we were going to be doing this demo, I revoked access so that we could we could step through that process here. Um, so it's going to prompt the user the first time they log in. They're going to sign in with their username. It's going to ask them or tell them what what uh, access they want they need. So the ability to see contacts so we can pull that information up, the ability to to see the calendar information, view, edit, etc. Um, once you hit allow, that's all it takes. That gets registered on the Google and on the Azure uh, Microsoft Office 365 side. And then the application goes and pulls in all your calendar information. We see multiple colors in here. Uh, what that actually represents are the multiple Google calendars that I have in place for this account. So if we pull this down real quick, uh, you're going to see I have a uh, identity team calendar in this uh, pinkish color. I've got a project team calendar in red. I've got my main calendar in blue. And those colors correspond 
to the ones that we've got in our Teams app here. So if we see, we've got the pinkish color, the blue, and the red. Um, so makes sense. It went and read in that calendar information and overlaid it on a calendar in my Teams application. As you can see, the nav bar colors, the logo, et cetera, match up to what I had in my administrative portal. Now, how does an end user use this? I can see all the meetings in my Google calendars, my various Google calendars, based on what I have selected. If I went into Google here and I decided that I wanted to um, have something different selected, I wanted to have, you know, I didn't want the project team calendar here. If I deselect this upon the next refresh, um, that's going to be removed from my from my Teams calendar here. So if I deselect that, both of the red options are going to go away. So we have that. And we're going to give it just a second. You see they get removed from the Google calendar right here. So the 13th and the 18th, those are gone now. And we're going to wait just a second, and then the refresh is going to happen. All right. Now let's pop over. And we can see both of those are gone. So uh, when it refreshed, those calendars weren't selected, and so those events were removed. Pretty straightforward concept. So whatever you've got selected in Team or in Google here is what's going to be uh, what actually shows up on the calendar in the Teams application. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it back. We'll give it a second uh, while that refreshes, and then we'll continue on. All right. So what I want to go ahead and do is how do we interact with this? Let's talk through that. All an end user has to do is pick a date that they want to create a meeting for um, and click on it. When they do, they'll be given a pop-up. This pop-up is going to let them add in a title. Um, title is required. So let's say this is going to be lunch with Steve. That's not an all-day event. We're going to go on Thursday the 20th. And we're going to go to lunch at 11.30. And we're going to go for an hour and a half. So we configure our times for the meeting. Um, if I want to add in a guest here, I could go ahead and put in uh, an additional email address. I can define what calendar that's going to show up on based on the ones that are selected. So we're going to leave it as my default calendar here. Um, I can change the color palette on it. Do I want to set a different color for that calendar event? I can change my notification information, my visibility information. And for whatever reason, um, when I go to lunch with Steve, we're going to have a Teams meeting. Maybe this is a working lunch and we've got um, some other people that are going to be joining remotely. Um, or we're going to do a virtual COVID launch. Uh, we go ahead and hit Create Teams Meeting here. This is going out and querying the Teams API to generate an online meeting for me. And as we can see, uh, it was successful, and we're able to inject that information directly into the invite. Uh, so when I go ahead and hit Save here, Launch with Steve appears on this calendar. And lo and behold, Launch with Steve appears on this calendar. So what it did was directly write the new calendar invitation um, to my Google Calendar, and it appended the Teams information in the description. So now when this invitation goes out or when I need to access this meeting, I have the Teams connection information directly in there. I'm able to even come in uh, directly into the invite, and I could join this meeting or dial into it, etc. So what we're allowing end users to do, users that, that don't necessarily have Outlook um, calendars, Outlook mailboxes, uh, they're able to utilize their Gmail, G Suite, the same way they would today, but now they can leverage the power of Teams for collaboration. They can get that first-party experience where they've got their calendar information in here, they're able to create online meetings, send those out to people, and join them directly in the Teams app just like everyone else. Um, this works bidirectionally, so as we add new events in here, so we're going to create a new meeting invite here, and we're going to say meeting Google, let's call it G Suite, and it's not an all-day event, it's from 10 to 10.30, 
Um, we're not going to put any location information. We'll leave it. We'll put it on the identity team calendar here. And let's hit save. So this will take just a second. Um, we see it shows up almost immediately on the Google Calendar. And that's going to synchronize and show up on our Teams calendar. So we're going to give this one second, and then we're going to see that show up. All right, so it looks like synchronization has happened, and we pop over here. I can see I've got a 10 a.m. meeting. And lo and behold, it was the meeting is set up in G Suite. So this makes it fully functional. Um, for G Suite calendar application, and now it's built directly into Teams. Uh, as you continue to build on your Teams collaboration and using Teams as a collaboration platform, users will be able to get full access to their G Suite calendars now and, and truly be able to utilize it in the fashion that it was intended to. Hope you guys have uh, enjoyed the demo, and thank you very much.